I want you to imagine something for me. Imagine that you're premiering a musical that you wrote on Broadway, and you're casting yourself in the title role. But as you look around at the A-list Broadway talent that surrounds you on stage, you realize that you don't quite have the vocal technique that these guys have. But you still have to write a dramatic song for you, for your character, to sing in the middle of the second act. You don't have the vocal stamina to hit a high A, you know, an hour and a half into the show. So what do you write? Well, if you're Lin-Manuel Miranda, you write... In the eye of a hurricane there is quiet. Which, listen, this song has a tiny vocal range. The highest note in the song uh, is that. That's it. That's as high as it goes. But still, it is so dramatic and so powerful. So this song is what we're talking about today on Music Theater Theory. Whoa! Hello, by the way, if you don't know me, my name is Mateo Chavez-Lewis. I'm a professional musical theater composer and music director, splitting my time right now between here in Toronto and New York City. And I post videos like this every week, analyzing my favorite songs from the musical theater canon. So if that sounds like your jam, don't forget to subscribe. Let's look at Hurricane. I posted a video a few weeks back about Helpless, because I think that's a song from Hamilton that really does not get talked about enough, and I think that Hurricane is the same. It's such a well-crafted song. It starts like this. With these chords. In the eye of a hurricane there is quiet For just a moment A yellow sky I was 17, a hurricane destroyed my town. I didn't drown. I couldn't seem to die. I wrote my way out. And then we go on to the next section. These chords are very important for two reasons. The first reason I'm going to tell you right now. The second reason I will get into later. And it's a theory that I have that I have not seen anywhere else on the internet. Um, so stay tuned for that at the end of the video. But right now, the only thing I want to tell you is that this chord progression we have heard before in the show. The astute viewers among you may already know where that is. The Battle of Yorktown. 1781. Monsieur Hamilton, Monsieur Lafayette, in command where you belong, how you say no sweat, etc. The Battle of Yorktown, the world turned upside down. That song uses the same chords that Hurricane does. Is that a coincidence? Well, no. <laughs> We're dealing with probably the best musical theater writer of our generation, Lin-Manuel Miranda here, okay? This is not a coincidence. These chords represent Hamilton thinking he's about to die. Let me, let me back that up for you. In the Battle of Yorktown, Hamilton says, I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory this is, where, this is where it gets me, on my feet, the enemy ahead of me. He, he really believes he's going to die in that battle. He doesn't, spoiler alert, he survives, um, but he really believes he's going to die. In Hurricane, he's remembering other moments where he thought he was going to die, specifically when he was 17 and the hurricane came and destroyed his town. And then also later in the song, you'll see when he was 12 and him and his mother got very, very sick, and his mother didn't survive the illness, but he did. So all of these moments where Hamilton has faced death, we get D minor, C major, and G major. And these chords are just so intense and dramatic. It's only three simple triads, and yet they're so effective because they're quite surprising, actually. This chord is a D minor. So it gives us the sense that we're in the key of D minor, which uses those notes. Crucially, it uses that B flat, right? But then we get C, G major, and a G major chord uses a B natural. So instead of the minor scale, it's like we're using a scale that is very similar to the minor scale called the Dorian scale. It's slightly different. It goes like this. 
where obviously instead of that B flat, we're getting a B natural. And that makes it feel very dramatic and almost like medieval. Like this scale was used a lot in the medieval times, literally. So it's very dramatic, very sacred. Da -da. Interestingly though, when Hamilton actually does face death in The World Was Wide Enough, this is where Hamilton duels with Aaron Burr and he gets shot and killed. We don't get those chords anywhere. And in fact, at the end, we get um, these chords here from Aaron Burr. F, D minor, and A minor. Now I'm the villain in your history. Now that is, in a different key, the chords from Wait For It. Theodosia writes me a letter every day. And so now that Hamilton is gone, we're not getting the chords that Hamilton associates with death because Hamilton's not there anymore. We're not seeing the story from Hamilton's perspective. We're seeing the story from Aaron Burr's perspective. And we're remembering how Burr always told himself to wait for it. And as soon as he disobeyed that command, he did this thing that ruined his entire career and legacy, which is killing Alexander Hamilton. So I think that's pretty cool. Hurricane continues like this. I wrote my way out, wrote everything down far as I could see. I wrote my way out, I looked up and the town had its eyes on me. They passed a plate around, etc. Now this section is very musical theater. We don't know if these piano arrangements were done by Lin-Manuel Miranda or by Alex Lacamoire who I love, who was in charge of the orchestrations and arrangements of the show, um, and his contribution to the show cannot be overstated, but regardless of who is in charge of the piano arrangements, these are some very musical theater chords, yeah? That's very musical theater. And it's because of this chord called the sus chord, which is short for suspended. And in a sus chord, you replace the middle note in the chord with either the second note, one, two, there you, there you go. Or you replace it with the fourth note, one, two, three, four, like that. So either way, there's gonna be a tension in it. Or here, that's the sus two, that's the sus four. Either way, there's a tension in it, and that tension is going to resolve. So you usually have a sus chord that moves to then a normal major chord, and that's exactly what happens here, F sus to F, um, C sus to C. There's C sus, and there's C. So you're suspending the tension, that's why it's called a suspended chord. Um, but that's used in so much musical theater, like how many Jason Robert Brown songs do you know with that sound in it, right? Like. That's classic musical theater. So even though, you know, Hamilton is touted as the hip hop musical, and it is, there's still a lot of musical theater, good old fashioned contemporary musical theater stuff going on in this piano part. And like I said, the range of this song is so small. So baritones, if you don't have this in your rep book, you should. They passed a, pl they passed a plate around. Total strangers moved to kindness by my story raised enough for me to put passage on a ship that was new york bound this is the highest note in the entire song total strangers moved and he sings it a lot of times but he never goes higher in the entire song and that's kind of shocking most songs even for baritones will go up to like an f maybe you know like soliloquy from carousel which is a classical baritone bass song is like I'll go out and make it or steal it or take it goes all the way up to a G and then obviously we have you know Dear Evan Hansen with its waving up to the B flat so it's like a lot of songs for men on Broadway go way higher than this song this song the highest note is here compared to waving through a window it's that many notes lower so it's quite a low song, like a shockingly low song for a dramatic, 
lead on Broadway, it goes totally against the expectation that leading men always have to sing very, very high. And I love it for that. And baritones, you should love it for that too. Put this song in your rep book. Then we come to this bridge section where he starts rapping. And this is great because not only the character Hamilton, he's literally saying, I wrote my way out. So how does he prove that he wrote his way out? By writing some rhymes, by using his words. I think that's very, very important for the character. Also, Lin-Manuel Miranda, again, playing to his own strengths. He knows he can deliver a rap like nobody's business. Um, and he has a little bit of a higher time hitting those high notes. <laughs> and the rhythm here is so interesting, the way that the piano rhythm contradicts the vocal line. I wrote my way out of hell. I wrote my way to revolution. I was louder than the crack in the bell. I wrote Eliza, love letters until she fell, etc. Like I can't even play it and sing it at the same time because they're so antithetical to each other. The piano is going, bah, and I guess the full orchestra in the show is going, bah, 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 bah. But the singer's going, I wrote my way out of hell. I wrote my way to revolution. I was louder than the crack in the bell. And so those rhythms are in conflict with each other and it just creates this totally dramatic feeling. It's amazing. And it all culminates in this section, which is so dramatic. And when my prayers to God were met with indifference, I picked up a pen. I wrote my own deliverance. In the eye of a hurricane, there is quiet. And then we go back to the original chord progression. This section also is borrowed from Yorktown at the end of the dance break, so at the end of the battle. That exact melody plays. After a week of fighting, a young man in a red coat stands on a parapet. And so again, this is also representing kind of the end of the battle here, where Hamilton is like kind of coming to a decision that he has to write his way out of this situation, which is a bad move. And we're all like, no, don't do it. Someone else who is like, no, don't do it, is Aaron Burr, who in Hamilton's head comes out singing his little mantra, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And the whole ensemble says, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. It's like a warning to Hamilton. Hey, I know most of the time your reckless go get him attitude has done you favors this time don't do it, don't do it, wait for it, wait for it. Listen to Burr just this once. Burr is urging Hamilton in his head. The ensemble, all of these voices in Hamilton's head are being like, don't do this, dude, it's stupid. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. History has its eyes on you, don't do it. And Eliza and Angelica are also in his ears being like, don't do this, dude, don't reveal yourself this way. Don't ruin your marriage. Don't ruin your career like this. Don't do it. But he says, no, no, no. This is the eye of the hurricane. This is the only way I can protect my legacy. And everyone goes, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait. And then we get this extreme moment of tension. The Reynolds pamphlet. And that's how the song ends. And it goes into the song called The Reynolds pamphlet, which is where he reveals that he's had an affair on his wife. This moment here, it's fortissimo, so it's super loud, and also the tension is incredible. This is what's being played. Literally, the only thing that's being played is an A that's doubled down the octave, so two A's, and then two B flats up here. If you play an A and a B flat right next to each other on the piano, these are all A's, let's pick this one, and then if you play these B flats, if you move those down to here, they're right next to each other, and that's it. Those are the only two notes being played on the whole piano. It's like the ultimate tension. Nothing else is being played. It's crazy to end a song on that tension. You know, usually songs will end like... Ah, so songs will resolve in some way at the end, but no, not this one, because Hamilton's story isn't resolved. There's still a ton of tension, and Hamilton's about to make the biggest mistake of his life. So nothing's resolved. And Lin-Manuel Miranda is a very smart writer, so he didn't resolve the music either. And there's one thing left that I want to point out before I let you all go. And if you're still watching this far into the video, oh boy, are you about to be rewarded because this is so cool. I discovered this while I was researching this video. I've obviously known Hamilton for years and I had never noticed this before. And I couldn't find anybody talking about this online. Okay. 
this chord progression D minor C G we know that it comes up a lot throughout the show we've already talked about that I want to talk for a second about the rhythm because it's syncopated which means that it doesn't land on the beat it could have been where every chord falls right on the beat but it's not this chord is pushed over by one sixteenth note so it's like a sixteenth syncopation and it sounds like this That exact 16th syncopation is used somewhere else in the show. Here, if you don't look at this chord, um, and you only look at this chord and this chord, uh, this, these two are accented. That's what this little kind of arrow thing means. It means that they're punched out by the players. This little dot means it's played staccato, which means it's played very light and bouncy. So this note is a little bit less important. These chords here, that's what's important about this uh, section of music. And if I just play the accented chords, we get one, two, three, four, five, five. It's the exact same rhythm underneath the chorus of my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. The exact same 16th note syncopation, but it gets even crazier. Okay, here are the chords for my shot. We have G minor, F, B flat. If I put those into the key of D minor, it sounds like this. It's the reverse of the hurricane theme. The hurricane theme starts on, the melody of it starts on D and then goes down a full tone and then down a semitone. The melody of my shot starts on, in D minor, it starts on D and then it goes up a full tone and then up a semitone. They are exact reverses of each other. And my shot is this anthem for Hamilton where he celebrates the legacy he's going to leave behind in his lifetime. And the other theme is Hamilton facing death and the fear of death. And they're reverses of each other. And that is not a coincidence. I will not let anybody tell me that that's a coincidence. Lin-Manuel definitely did that on purpose. He's way too smart and way too thoughtful of a composer for that just to be coincidental, especially because they're played in the same rhythm with the same 16th note syncopation. Wow. I, I just noticed that. I literally, I have been listening to Hamilton and I've memorized the entire score. And I, I like for nine years now and I have never noticed that before today um and so I hope I hope your mind is as blown by that as mine is because my mind is quite blown um and if you want to learn more about Hamilton I'm teaching a whole course all about Hamilton over at the Broadway Maven in November so check that out thebroadwaymaven.com the link is in the description um yeah thank you all so much for watching I hope you found this as interesting as I did and I will see you next week here on Music Theater Theory. Whoa! Peace out, y'all.